Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Japan and we're going to return to a brewery who I reviewed once for you on the channel already. And these guys are quite interesting because they're a Japanese gypsy brewery and there's not too many of those around at the moment. So for this one then we're going to return to the Far Yeast Brewing Company who are mainly based in Tokyo and they release their beers under the name Kagwa. This one is the Blank Kuvi Dry Hopping which comes in at 10 percent ABV and I think this one will be a little bit like some of these special editions of Duvel that you come across because this one is supposed to be a gold a Belgian golden strong ale something like that but this one is hopped with Mosaic, Simcoe and Chinook and it's a limited edition beer for 2019. So really curious to see how this one turns out. The IPA that I had from these guys before was also a very nice beer. That was also a special edition right enough so I maybe need to see if I can review some of their core beers for you at some point fairly soon but very curious to see how this one turns out and as always I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer so as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from the Kagua beer range and the uh, the Far East Brewing Company hopefully I can add some more in the fairly near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefetch or whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Japanese beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about the Far Yeast Brewing Company then, on to my brewery notes. So Far Yeast Brewing were founded back in 2011 as Nippon Craft Beer Incorporated, but they later changed their name to Far Yeast Brewing Company in late 2014. So as I mentioned earlier, the company are mainly based in Tokyo and the founder of the company is Shiro Yamada who has a background in business having worked in the finance sector and also as a consultant for various different companies. So they launched their Kagawa brand of beers back in 2012 and these are Belgian style beers and then they launched the Far Yeast brand of beers in 2014 before they decided that instead they would use that name as the, as the name of the, the parent company if you like, as the main company. So these guys as I mentioned are a gypsy brand Brewery. They brew most of their beers at other breweries in and outside of Japan. Quite a few of their beers are brewed in Belgium, of course, and that's why you often find them in these little sort of stubby Belgian type bottles. But um, as of December 2019, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced just over 50 different beers. When I had a quick look at Untapped a few minutes ago, the exact number of beers that these guys have produced was 53. Um, they do have, I think it's three different core range beers, and you'll find those. Um, you, you know, you'll find those in quite a few different beer stores and they always release kind of special editions every couple of months as well. And I've noticed that they are doing a few collaboration beers as well. They did a collaboration beer to celebrate the Rugby World Cup here in Japan. So I'll need to see if I can get a hold of that one and review it for you on the channel. That's definitely one of the ones that I want to review before I leave uh, this time again. But um, yeah, interesting brewery this one. Cool to see that Belgian beer is now having a little bit of a a heyday in Japan because a lot of the breweries as I've told you before in Japan are German influenced so interesting to see that there is a Belgian influenced one as well it's there's more and more breweries kind of popping up these days that are trying the more traditional German and uh, and Belgian styles of beer in America and things like that too so exciting times for Belgian style beer I have to say but yeah that's all you really need to know about the the Kagawa beer brand and the Far East Brewing Company for the moment that was all I was able to find on this brewery actually um, but definitely one that you want to check out if you find yourself in Japan and you're interested in Belgian beers and I would say though it is actually quite easy to get a hold of some of the different Belgian beers um, throughout Japan. There's a very good Belgian beer dealer here in Japan called Otsuki Sakiten, if I'm remembering the name correctly. They're way up in the north a little bit. I still need to go and visit them at some point. That was definitely something that I want to do actually. Mainly it's an alcohol shop but you know they've got a little import business of Belgian beers too. But um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. If you want to learn more about Kagua Beer and um, the Far East Brewing Company you can check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and 
Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and of course you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all the different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, let's get on with this one then and see how we do. So as you can see, here is the Cagua symbol there, that's on all of the beers, I'll just tip it a little bit, the light in here when it comes to lighter coloured labels is a little bit troublesome, you know Japanese rooms are a bit more dully lit than European rooms I have to say but you can see nice branding on this one, the special editions, the artwork is always a little bit different, usually when it comes to the, the regular beers it's kind of a flat matte background, there you can see on the little top label there, blanc QV dry hopping um, and it tells you a little bit on the back it says this is a Belgian style strong ale dry hop with mosaic, simcoe and chinook so we know mosaic is a lovely sort of tangerine orangey kind of hop simcoe is more sort of passion fruity and chinook is a very kind of strong grapefruity and also pine raisiny hop so I think this one should be really interesting this beer comes in at 10% ABV of course so it will be a little bit of a beast and it is just a plain white bottle cap on this one. This one is brewed in Belgium incidentally, it says here it's brewed at uh, Brauerei de Graal or Brauerei de Graal which is in Brackel in Belgium and I'm sure I've actually reviewed a couple of beers from that brewery before. I forget which brand of beer it is that's, uh, that's brewed there but I have definitely reviewed something for you um, from these guys on the channel before and not just another um, Kagwa beer. So um, yeah let's have a little look at this one and get it out and into the glass then. That's going to annoy me now as to which brewery, uh, which beer brand it is that's brewed at, uh, at Brauerei de Graal because you know quite a few of the breweries have that. They've got the parent in Belgium. Quite often you'll get a few different beer brands, I guess you can say as well, brewed at the one brewery. Um, so yeah. Definitely worth keeping that in mind. So um, yeah, um, this was yet another beer that was bought at liquor shop Asahiya in Taishibashi Imaichi here in Osaka. Koji and Rika run the store as I always tell you. Very, very nice people and I'll put the link to their Facebook page in the description below. They are pretty much my dealers of, um, of Japanese beer. Um, and definitely, that shop is definitely worth checking out if you find yourself in Osaka. Some A great selection of local Japanese things uh, from all over the country actually and you can get some really nice Belgian and uh, German beers as well as various other things too. There was some Taiwanese beers in the shop this time when I was there so um, you might see some of those reviewed a little bit later on. But um, yeah, as you can see with this one, it's poured really quite nicely. Um, I would say this one actually looks a little bit like a New England IPA, something like that, that's quite interesting. Um, but yeah, like I say, this one I think is supposed to be a sort of very, just a Belgian strong golden ale actually. So this one will probably be a little bit akin to the likes of um, a triple or to a very strong Belgian blonde or something like that. Um, it's a bit of a kind of grey area when it comes to Belgian beer to be honest. Usually the triples and the quadruples and the dubels have to be produced by one of the Abbey breweries and other breweries will mimic that of course but they call them Belgian strong dark ales and Belgian strong golden ales and stuff like this. But yeah this is definitely one of the hazier uh, Belgian style beers that I've come across. It really does look not too far off a New England IPA to be honest with you. There's a solid finger and a half of a frothy. I would say kind of perfect white cream coloured head actually, it looks very very nice, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass but you can see the carbonation in this one is quite active and you know that's a typical trait of Belgian style beer, you know bottle conditioning and things like that, Belgian beer is always about the yeast and things too but a lovely looking beer this one um, and as I say the thing that's surprising about the appearance of this one is just how kind of hazy it is, it really does look like one of these New England um, double IPAs or hazy IPAs however you want to term it but a lovely looking beer I have to say so um, yeah let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on with this one, I'm really curious to see how this turns out so yeah straight away with this beer yeah, straight away with this one, there's a really nice, um, kind of big, white, bready, doughy, yeasty kind of thing. I mean, it's that typical Belgian yeasty quality. It actually smells a little bit spicy, to be honest with you. But yeah, lovely big, sort of white, bready, yeasty notes to this one. That forms the whole linchpin of the beer. Um, it almost is a little bit wheaty as well, to be honest with you. Um, I'm not sure if it will be a a more kind of like a, a very strong Belgian wit or something like that but it doesn't have some of the kind of sweetness you'd expect with that there is just a little bit of that wheaty quality in there but some lovely big doughy yeasty notes in there it does have a little bit of a kind of slightly spicy note to it but as I say it's not really coriander or anything like that it just comes across as being very very fresh 
and white bready. Um, definitely some nice kind of biscuity notes to it. And quite often with more like Trippel style beers, it's not unheard of in Belgium to add sort of candy sugar to uh, to Belgian style beer. Quite a few Trippel and Quadrupel producers do that actually. Um, because of course in Belgium they don't have the same purity laws that they have in Germany, but you know, that's all part and parcel of uh, of of German beer versus Belgian beer. But yeah, some lovely big yeasty notes in there. Um, it's got a little teeny touch of like a banana sort of uh, bubblegummy type note to it. Like I say, there's a little bit of a spice, maybe a kind of clovey spice in there, um, but not the same level as you'd get perhaps from, you know, like a Hefeweizen or a Wit beer or something like that. It's quite a, a fresh smelling, bready, wheaty sort of yeasty quality that you get out of this beer. It smells really, really very nice actually, very fresh and very inviting. Like a little touch of brown sugar, as I said, some biscuity notes in there. Um, it's not strong enough to be kind of caramel or anything. But definitely, it's almost got a little touch of a peppery spice to it. The more you smell of this, the more kind of spicy it becomes, I think. But on the hoppy side of things, a little teeny touch of earthiness in there. Some nice sort of floral aromaticity as well. Um, you know, it's it's with all of these hops, you're going to get a little bit of a floral aromaticity. But with this one, you can really smell the big piney resin notes of the Chinook. I wouldn't be surprised if Chinook has been used as the bittering hop in this one, and the other ones are being used more as aroma hops. Mosaic and Simcoe go together very nicely as uh, aroma hops. And the way you do that, of course, for those of you that aren't into home brewing, is um, usually when you add the bittering hop, you add that when your beer reaches the boil. The earlier in the boil you add the hops, the more bitterness and things you get out of them. But if you add them later in the boil, usually within like the last half hour or so, it's different for long boil beers like stouts and barley wines and stuff like this. Um, but the later you add them in the brew, the more sort of flavour and aroma you're going to get out of them. And dry hopping usually is flavour and aroma as well, actually. So, um, yeah, I believe that probably what they're doing here is using the Chinook earlier on and then they're adding the other hops a little bit later because you've got that lovely big pine resiny note, some lighter grassy notes there as well. And then you've got the nice big fruity characters to this. Um, and the grapefruit that you would normally get from Chinook isn't too present. So I think that's one of the other telltales that the the Chinook is more is more being used as the bittering hop right enough. Um, but yeah, you've got some lovely kind of... Uh, you do get a little bit of that juicy kind of passion fruit that you expect of Simcoe. But to me, this one is surprising because it comes across as quite lemony and zesty. I would have, if I was blind smelling this, I might have guessed that it was Centennial that was in here, to be honest with you. Um, there is something just really zesty about this beer, but that could be the yeast. Quite often with Belgian beers, the yeast can give you some of the fruity characters as well. Um, you get high attenuation yeast, such as the ones used in Brut IPAs, that will give you these big, um, you know, these big sort of, um, how do you say, big sort of astringent-y, um, zesty aromas, if you like. But yeah, there is a little bit of an orangey quality to this one, some of the tangerine notes, but to me that's quite mild. The fruity side of things is mainly sort of passion fruity for me, and a little bit more of a kind of lemony, zesty sort of thing. I don't get too much of the sort of tangerine note that you would normally expect of the... Um, of the the mosaic actually so um yeah take a little bit of time and look at the aroma of this one before you taste it but i think this will be a pretty interesting beer i'm really curious to see how it turns out so um yeah let's have a taste of this one then and see how we get on this one is the blanc cuvee dry hopping from the kagua beer brand at far east brewing company a gypsy brewery from here in japan they brew their beers in belgium and a few of them here, but they are mainly based out in Tokyo. So let's have a look at this beer and see how we go on. Slanja Skull Kampai. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, it's quite different from other sort of Belgian style beers that I've had. It does almost have some of that smoothness that you would expect of a New England IPA or something like that. It's almost like a New England malt base, but it's got a Belgian yeast strain in it. That's a, it's really interesting. I quite like it though, I have to say. This is quite an interesting creation. I love it when you get beers like this and you know, this is the thing when you have Japanese breweries 
although albeit this is probably brewed by a Belgian brewer right enough, um, you will get some really kind of quirky things over here and I think this is quite a quirky beer. I'm sure I said the same about the last one that I had from Cagua as well. Yeah, it's really, it's an interesting one this. I don't know where to start with this. But let's try and break the flavour of this down a little bit then. So, centre of your palate, you've got that lovely kind of pale malty base to it. You can definitely feel some of that nice, smooth, white bready, wheaty quality there as you go further into the flavour. It's got a good degree of sweetness to it as well, actually, and you can feel the yeasty qualities in this beer just building up and thickening out the further you go into the aftertaste as well. The spiciness that I was picking up in the centre of the palate, it's... You know, it is a little apparent, but it's not kind of overpowering the whole beer. I thought it would be quite powerful in this one. You do get a little bit of it. You can feel just behind the fruity part of your palate, towards the front of the tongue. You can feel there's a little touch of spiciness to this one. Um, but it's not overpowering, I have to say. But I do like how that, um, how that goes together. It is really, it, it is pretty damn nice that, I have to say. It's a very clean, fresh feeling beer. In the centre of your palate you do get, there's maybe a little touch of caramel or like honey to it in the centre of the palate, but as you move further out from that it gradually becomes a little bit more kind of biscuity and that's almost just sitting on top of some of these more doughy, yeasty characteristics that the beer has. Um, and I really, I like that about it. I really do like that about this one to be honest with you. Um, it's definitely, I mean, I would never, if I was blind tasting this, it would be hard to tell that it's 10%, to be honest with you. It's quite good at covering up the alcohol, but there is just something about this. The way the wheaty notes in this beer come out and the, the sort of smoothness and the sweetness that you get from the yeasty characteristics of this one, it is almost a little bit like a New England in some ways. It's not got the creaminess that you'd expect of the oats or the lactose and dextrose and stuff that you can put in that beer style. But it definitely has some of the characteristics and, you know, if you have tried this beer, do let me know your own thoughts about that in the comments section below. For me, there is just an element of a kind of New World type thing to this, like a New England sort of thing. Yeah, I like that about this. I'm finding towards the back of the palate, it really does sweeten up the further that you go into um, the aftertaste. The wheatiness in this one really has a very nice sweet characteristic to it actually. It's um, it's nice and you do get a little bit of that citrusy quality mixing in with it too. You might find some woody undertones developing with this beer the further that you go into the flavour as well but personally I think this is, a, this is a really interesting beer. It is all about the malty and yeasty qualities right enough and they've pulled off something quite nice here so thumbs up to Kagawa Beer and Far East Brewing Company however you want to term it so um, yeah in terms of the um, in terms of the the hoppy side of things then back corners of the palate there is a little bit of earthiness there and that I think mainly would come from the um, from the mosaic but then as you come further forward along the sides of the tongue you do get some of that nice kind of piney resin from the um, from the Chinook in this one, but it's nowhere near as prominent as what I was thinking it would be. Um, so I'm wondering if I've told you lies about thinking that the Chinook was a, a bittering hop in this, because if you did use Chinook as a bittering hop, I've got a feeling that this beer would feel a hell of a lot drier um, and a hell of a lot more kind of spicy. It's actually just got a nice level of bitterness to it, in fairness. There's nothing wrong with high IBUs right enough, um, but this one, as I say, that's one of the other things that really gives this beer just a little bit of a slightly New England vibe to it. As you go round the front curve of the palate as well, it's a little bit more grassy and light. Pardon me and things like that too. So I mean, the, the green side of the hops in this one are really quite grassy and floral rather than anything else. But let's move on to the fruity side of things. So as I always say, the fruity part of the beer comes out in that little oily bubble behind the front curve of the palate. And um, for me, this one really is quite, uh, it, it's, it's, it retains that sort of freshness I was talking about, it's nice. So yeah, on the fruity side of things then, if you go towards the back 
part of the palette there. You do get a little touch of the darker grapefruit out of this one, but it's quite mild, to be honest. It's quite minimal. But as you move further forward on the palette, you get a nice sort of um, passion fruity. Um, you do get a little bit of a kind of passion fruity and more kind of mang almost, I don't think it's quite mango, I do think it is a bit more passion fruity and that's the Simcoe coming out. But as you move further forward onto the front of the palette, you start to get a few almost like apricoty or like papaya type flavours out of this one. It's not mango, so it is more of kind of apricoty and papaya, but then as you reach the kind of front tip of the tongue, it's a little bit more kind of... Um, tangerine and orangey and things and that's the mosaic that's coming out of this beer actually and it's really nice how that pulls together in this one so um, yeah the further that you go into the aftertaste as well you will notice there is a slightly lemon limey character on the very tip of your tongue too which is very very nice so I mean this beer really does retain a kind of theme of being quite fresh and zesty some of it comes from the yeasty qualities you can definitely feel a little bit of the citrus kind of jumping out of the wheaty character that this beer has um, but it does retain, a, the further you go into the aftertaste you will get a little bit of that kind of honey biscuity sort of thing that's covering the booziness in this beer but it doesn't struggle to cover the booziness that it has actually but you will get just a little touch of alcohol warmth down in the chest but I mean that's quite common with the uh, with the Belgian style beers but um, yeah in terms of uh, a Belgian strong golden ale um, it's not one in the traditional sense that you might expect. I mean, normally you would expect something along the lines of a, a triple or something like that, actually. So this is a really kind of interesting one. But then if it's a blanc, you do expect something a little bit more wheaty, in fairness. And it does deliver on that account, actually. This is a really interesting uh, beer, I have to say. I'm not sure. I mean, when it's got this amount of wheaty quality in it, I'm not sure why they, they didn't call it like a, a strong Belgian wit or something like that. They could have gone all in with the wit beer type thing with it, and I think that would have worked quite nicely. And I mean, it probably is more of a wit beer than it is anything else, to be honest with you, but it doesn't quite have the same level of sort of spiciness and things that you might find from that. Uh, from that style but I mean the main question is whether it's a good beer or not and it certainly is that so keep that in mind but um, yeah in terms of the mouthfeel then I would say uh, oh my little one must be needing get must be needing some feeding time again um, but yeah this one um, I would say it's quite mid-bodied carbonation is really um, it's quite crisp on this one, you would kind of expect that from a Belgian style beer. Um, overall I'd say the mouthfeel, it's, it's quite wet, it's quite crisp but it also has a good degree of smoothness to it. There's a good level of hoppy bitterness to this one, I think we're talking maybe about 40 IBUs with this one, something like that. Um, you've got some nice juicy fruity qualities to it, I'd say it's more, kind of the fruitiness is quite smooth in this one, it's not oily or anything like that. You do get a bit of zestiness on the front of your palate as well. It feels quite fresh and you've also got a degree of sweetness in the malt base with this beer as well but otherwise it's quite smooth. But overall a really quite nice beer this one. It is more like a wit beer than a strong Belgian thing but in fairness it's probably me that's assumed it's going to be more of like a kind of um, duvel type thing but um, it, it turned out not to be it really is more like a kind of strong Belgian whip beer but I like how that goes together I mean they've got a good hop selection in here all three of them shine out quite nicely although I would say the Chinook didn't come out quite in the way that I expected but um, on the basis of this one I'd certainly be happy to try a few more of their beers so if you get the chance to try this one have a go at it and hopefully I can review one or two of their core beers for you over the next little while but um, yeah let's leave it at that for this one this one was the Blanc QV dry hopping, a 10% strong Belgian ale, more like a kind of strong Belgian wit in my opinion, but this one comes to you from the Cagua beer brand at uh, the Far East Brewing Company, a gypsy brewery based out of Tokyo. So yeah, check this one out if you get the chance. So um, yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Cagua and from a Far East Brewing Company. Been cool to return to this brewery again after a little while. I hope you've enjoyed my take on this one and I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you check out my social media and make sure you check out Far East Brewing Company and also Liquor Shop Asahia. Slanja, Skull, Kampai. Cheers.